Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Allie and welcome to Beauty with a Purpose. If you are new to my channel, I upload four videos a week, beauty, Bible, and lifestyle. So if any of those interest you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get into today's video. So for today's video, I have for you guys, oh dang it, a Q&A get ready with me. So I will pop up on the screen makeup products that I used as I'm answering your guys' questions. So let's get into it. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and get into this. I am going to tie back my hair. I have my handy dandy paper here printed out with all of your guys' questions. And let's go ahead and start. Some of these questions are fun. Some of them are more serious. Um, I did post it on Instagram stories a couple of weeks ago or last week. Is it, well, from filming this video, today is the 19th. So I think I posted it last week. So ignore the background. I'm trying to get my vlog uploaded finally. But yeah, so if you ever wanna participate in my Q and A's, just go ahead and follow me on Instagram because that is where I post all of them. And you guys, I love when you guys interact with me on Instagram. I love when you guys feel comfortable coming to me about things of God and I feel, and I love whenever you guys ask me to pray for you guys because I'm a firm believer that prayer works. So if you haven't already, go follow me on Instagram so that way you can ask questions that you want to know. I decided to do one by myself because I know sometimes, I don't know, like maybe you don't want to ask a question for me and my husband because you're a woman and you're kind of more private. So I was like, you know what, let me do one just me by myself and... As you guys heard, like Brian and I feel and think the same on a lot of um, situations and things like that. So, and I don't tell them your questions if it's just me doing a Q&A by myself. So next time I do a Q&A by myself, maybe you guys will feel comfortable asking some questions. Okay, so going in, hold on. <laughs> Okay, so now we can go ahead and get into it. And the first question is, when is your birthday? So my birthday is actually February 16th. So Brian gets his hands full at the beginning of the year. Um, we don't celebrate Valentine's Day, but um, he will still do a lot of special things for me during my entire birthday month. But my birthday is February 16th. The next question is, what is your favorite color? So my favorite color, I would say is very much so like a lilac purple. So like a powder purple as Brian would call it. This little brush is soft. Like a powder purple. Um, Brian would say, and I agree that my favorite tones are anything kind of like powdery or like blushy so I love like a blush pink like this or a dusty pink anything muted and like nude colors is currently what I'm loving right now like I don't know I just feel like those colors are so calming so like I said a favorite color overall lilac purple um if I'm buying like clothes because I don't ever wear purple for whatever reason but if I'm buying clothes I definitely gravitate towards like neutrals nudes and like blush pinks or dusty rose colors those are my favorite colors to wear next question was what is your favorite restaurant um say i have a favorite restaurant uh would have to be where brian and i go for our anniversary and this is super fancy steakhouse here in where we live in lubbock texas and that's las brisas but um i love italian food so anything pasta and like pasta mixed with seafood like give it to me so i love olive garden but i could go anywhere and get down on some italian food oh that, that question's coming up so i guess i'll go ahead and ask it what's your favorite food anything mexican and i don't mean like super mexican like i don't mean like mexico mexican food i mean like Tex-Mex Mexican food is my jam and Italian food. So 
Next question is, so the next question is, who is my best friend and how did we meet? Okay, overall, like lifelong best friend is actually my friend Brie. Now we don't hang out a lot just because like we're into different things, but when we do hang out, it's like we never stopped hanging out and that's what I love. Like that's what I consider a best friend is somebody you could go long periods of time without talking to, but then like whenever you get together, like it's kind of like, they're, like you never spent any time apart and she and I met in high school. Now a best friend that I hang out with all the time is my friend Karina. And we met, she and I went to high school together but we weren't really like in the same group of friends. But um, she ended up, we've always been Facebook friends and I saw that she had got baptized. And so I just commented on that picture where she got baptized, gave her some encouraging words and um, just kept reaching out to her, talking about the things of God. And I told her like, hey, like we should meet up. And like it never would happen, like it kept getting pushed back. And then by the time we were gonna try to meet up, like COVID happened, so everything shut down. And then once everything started opening back up, I reached out to her again. And I was like, hey, are you still feeling like meeting up? You know, like just to talk, like we can do that. And we did. And then it was like ever since that first time of hanging out, like we just like we just clicked and it wasn't even like us as people. But because we both love God, like and we love to share the things of God and just uplift one another in the things of God. It's like we just instantly like had a bond with each other as friends. And that was something that I have been looking for for a long time in my walk with God. Um, I, uh, I guess I'll say that on another but yeah, so I think it was just like, God had a timeline for both of us to find friends in Christ. And I would say she is my current best friend, if that makes sense. Not mad at this brow pencil at all. For it to be a brow definer. Not my favorite tips, but it is not bad. So the next question is, what helped you start your journey with God? Did something specifically happen? I was raised in and out of church. My mom would never take us to church, but we used to spend the summers with my aunt and uncle and they were faithful church goers. And so whenever we would go down there for the summer or any type of visitation, we would go to church with them. And so I kind of knew that there was a God and I knew what sin was and I knew like the basics, like, oh, don't have sex before marriage, don't be a murderer, don't steal, just basically don't do anything bad is kind of like how they were taught, but they were also very religious at the time. So like Pentecostal. And so their religion also believed in like, oh, only wear long skirts. Don't paint your nails. Don't shave your armpits. Don't shave your legs. A lot of things like that. So because that's how I grew up, I kind of didn't want anything to do with it because I'm very much a rule breaker. I hate rules. But um, it's just kind of like, that's my background with church. And then like, we would also go with my grandma, but my grandma would always go to Spanish speaking churches. I'm not bilingual, so I didn't know what was going on. And yeah, you go to Sunday school, but all you really learn in like religious Sunday schools is like, oh, Jesus loves you. You know, there's somebody who died on the cross for you. Like that's pretty much all you learn in religious Sunday schools. So I kind of lived my life just like any other young American and drinking, partying, sex, like that was my life. So what brought me to Christ was I was in a very toxic relationship. I'm talking abuse, cheating on one another just to cheat, like getting back at one another on and off just boxing like we were both men and I say that because I mean he's a man so I'd have to box him like I was a man because I mean whatever but um and just yeah so ended up getting pregnant by my ex and at the same time I found out that he had another girl pregnant at the same time so I was like okay done with that like that was a straw that broke the camel's back for me to like be done with him. And then like the more I just sat and thought about it, I was like, this is not how I want my child to grow up. Like I know that I need to change my life 
for my child because if I have a daughter, I don't want her doing the things that I do. And if I have a son, like I don't want him thinking it's okay for men to treat women a certain way. And I don't want him thinking that I'm the type of woman you should marry, the type of woman that I was at the time. And then it hit me also that I was like, I really need to change my life because if I, if Jesus were to come back, well, Ethan, I was pregnant with Ethan at the time. It was very on before I even knew that I was having a boy. So if Jesus were to come back at the time while Ethan was still a child, like I knew Ethan was innocent and I knew that I was living a life of sin and that I probably would go to hell because of the way that I was living my life. And that was my point where I was like, okay, yeah, I definitely got to change my life. I need to start seeking God. And that is what led me to my journey with God. Uh, my cousin would come over all the time. And because when I was in the beginning of my pregnancy, you guys, I was so sick because I was depressed because of what I had just found out. And then I was depressed because I didn't know it at the time, but it was Holy Spirit that was telling me you got to end this relationship and it did end and I had to let it go. And that's for whatever reason, I don't know why you have the strongest attachments to everything toxic. Like it's so crazy, but I did have a strong attachment to that relationship and letting it go. That's depressing because it's still a loss. You're still mourning a loss. Um, that comfortability, that thing that you're used to. And anyway, so I was depressed. I couldn't eat, couldn't keep anything down. I was constantly throwing up. And then my cousin would come over and she would always come and she would read the Bible to me. And I noticed every time she was coming and she would read the Bible to me, like I would be able to eat, like I would have some peace, like I wasn't crying. And I was like, man, like I like this. So then I started going to her church. And then I went to live with my sister to help her out in Colorado. Um, maybe a couple of months before I was due. So actually, yeah, so I went like at the end of April, beginning of May, I was due in June. And I got baptized in May of 2015. And that was all she wrote. So it honestly took me going through a toxic relationship, getting pregnant from the person in that toxic relationship, and then realizing that I didn't want to spend eternity without my kids. Cause that's sad to think that you would be suffering and your children would be just in the glory of God. And I want to be in the glory of God with my kids. So needless to say, God used my child to bring me to Christ. So the next question is, have you ever had to end a friendship? If so, what do you have? What advice do you have on dealing with that? I have ended a lot of friendships and they ended a lot because I, I have friends that we just drifted apart because they're in the world and I'm in Christ, but we can still get together and kind of like mingle and play games, but also understand that, you know, Allie isn't who she used to be. So Allie's not into the things that she once was into. So those are those friendships. And I just kind of say like, if it's people that you just drifted apart from, like just let that be what it is. There's no reason to try to like, fix it or make the pieces fit together just because you missed that friendship. But that doesn't mean just cut that person all together, out all together. You can still text that person and be like, hey, how have you been? You know, check up on them and just let that be what it is. Now, ending a friendship, I had to do this when I left my last church and it wasn't by choice. And it was actually a big reason that kept me at my last church for so long was that like, I just had a feeling like deep down, like all of the relationships I built there were going to be torn down just because we didn't attend the same church. And that was also something I did tell my friend Karina because we go to different churches, you know, like this is my background with church. Like I don't want to be friends based on the church that we attend. Like I'd rather be friends just because we both follow God. And so when that happened, I think I could have left that church in a better way. I know that now and I did apologize to everyone that I hurt for leaving the way that I did and that my actions kind of escalated and made things happen. And I did apologize to everyone that was affected by that. And so I would always say like, apologize if you've hurt that person and even though you didn't mean to, and then like, you know, just both be on the same page of, you know what, we've outgrown this friendship. Now we can still intermingle, but just know that we can't once be as close as we were. And that's just my take on that. Like anytime you end a friendship, like you always wanna do it on good terms. Now I understand that some friendships 
end on bad terms and like oh we should never be friends again but there should still always be a conversation to be had about you know what this is why i was hurt in this relationship and this is why or friendship um it's all they're all relationships but but this is why i was hurt in this friendship and this is why i feel like you know like we need to go our separate ways yada 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 so um there should always be a conversation that has to be had as far as that like you guys i'm not the best person i forgot my skin. like i said always apologize because that's what that is and if it was always and like i said if it was a friendship that we just kind of drifted apart because life took us down different paths like I just kind of let that be what it was and I reach out every once in a while like hey how have you guys been and things like that but ending friendships always have the conversation so that way there's no hard feelings left in the situation you should always resolve whatever hurt happened and then apologize for your role in the hurt and then keep it pushing but not everybody is meant to grow with you so you ha always have to remember that not everybody is meant to grow with you and if you feel like you're growing but that person won't allow you to grow like you have to let that go and you know like just tell them like i feel like we're at two we're on two different levels in life so maybe you know like you should do your thing just know that i still love you but i have to go on and do my thing that i'm feeling called to do and where i'm feeling called to go especially if you're walking with god and it's somebody in the world and you have to end that friendship like you really have to help them understand. I mean, I've had to do this with my sisters and thank goodness, thank goodness they're all coming to God a little bit more each day. But you know, I would tell them like, you know, like I can't go and do X, Y, and Z with you because like that's just not the life I'm living. But you know, like if you ever want to just have like some wholesome quality time that doesn't involve drinking, that doesn't involve filling my life with filth, then yeah, let's do it. But if you are in Christ, but you have friends that all they wanna do is do the things of the world, they're no longer a friend for you because a friend, whether they understand why you're following God or not, they will respect it. My sisters respect that there's just some things that they can't invite me to and that I won't go to. And they get that and they respect it. I have friends who get that and respect it. Friends that understand like, oh, I can't invite Allie to this because of X, Y, and Z. But you know, maybe I could go to Allie's house and chill. So if you always have to control the environment because of that, cool. But especially if you're in Christ. You gotta end those friendships that don't let you live fully and wholly for God. You have to let them go. And like I said, it's just being on the same page whenever you do leave that friendship instead of just cutting them off. Just have an, have an explanation. That's probably my biggest advice in that is have an explanation and just to talk about it. Sorry guys, had to put the lashes on. Um, wanted to know more about my babies their birthdays and things like that and like just what makes them them start with ethan ethan is a june baby june 21st 2015 he's currently five years old and i cannot believe it like cannot believe i've been a mom for half a decade and i cannot believe i've kept that child alive this long and i cannot be like believe that i'm same like <laughs> but ethan is very much my goofball and he's also my sweetheart. Ethan can make you laugh. Like his ad libs on things, like it's so funny because like you could say something like, Brian and I could say like a joke between him and I, and like Ethan will just come in and like say the most random thing and like make that joke like that much funnier. But he's also my baby that if he wakes up before I wake him up, he wants to come snuggle with mama and he wants to come randomly give mama kisses and lay on mama and just let mama love him. So he's definitely my sweetheart and he's my goofball. Bryson is my middle baby, July baby, July 28th, 2017. So my baby is currently three. Bryson is my more serious one and you can tell that just by looking at him, but he's also my most mischievous one and I mean, sneaky mischievous. So Bryson, like for instance, Bryson knows you don't get snacks without mommy's and daddy's permission. We got a refrigerator that beeps when it's been open for so long. So that way we would know when somebody was in the refrigerator. This boy has managed to learn how to get in and out of that refrigerator so fast that we don't hear him, has learned how to silently close cabinets so that way we don't hear him. And the next day when I'm cleaning the house, I'll find five or six Rice Krispie wrappers under his bed, string cheese wrappers in the guest room. Like 
it's so funny like he's not terrible but like it's the things that he knows he's not supposed to do that he does so it's not him being curious it's just like for whatever reason like the things we tell him not to do like those are the things he likes to do or <laughs> he likes to sneak out he likes to sneak out to the backyard because the back the door to the backyard is right across from their room and so if he feels like he's mad and like we're like Preston go to your room like he will silently open that back door and go outside and so if we're not paying attention like down the hallway we won't see that light shining and they'll be like where's Bryson and he's outside because he knows how to do things silently so he's like our sneaky mischievous one but he's also very serious he likes to have fun and play he's also my fighter like Bryson likes to fight but he only fights when he's fought with if that makes sense so he's very much a self-defender like it's very funny like and then there's king king is my baby it's my chunk of monka he is his birthday is december 7th 2018 so he is currently one he will be two in december and he's my last baby so this mama don't know what to do with herself because it i mean ethan was two when i had bryson and then bryson was one when i had king so it's kind of like oh my goodness like you know what i mean like what do i do i don't like i don't know what it's like to not have a baby and it's so weird but like i'm kind of loving it i don't know it's nice to not be pregnant i guess but um king is my loud one. He def like his name definitely suits him because if he is not being heard, he will make sure he's heard. Like he will make sure he is heard. And he also just carries himself with like such like independence. Like I want to do it. I can do it. So King was definitely a suiting name for him. And King is just my outright fighter. Like do not make him mad because it's so funny because. When he was younger, like just learned how to walk, his brothers would like do something to him. And we used to always tell them when he was like six months still crawling around, we used to always tell Bryson and Ethan like, y'all better leave King alone because whenever he gets older, like he's gonna be getting y'all back. But it's so funny. <laughs> so King is very much like a planner. He's a plotter. So King like plots to do something. And if you catch him while he's plotting, he'll go, to, he'll look at you like this. He's my plotter, <laughs> so. Now, if the boys do something to him, he like, he will go and just like smack him on the head. And like, it's just, it's hilarious. So like, like they'll do something to him and he'll let it go all day. Come nighttime, they'll be like sitting in the living room on the floor with their cups and their snacks watching a movie. And out of nowhere, here comes King with his cup. Bink, bink, like just smacks him. <laughs> on the head so it's very funny so king is definitely my plotter and my fighter i'll just say king's name suits him like he's very authoritative like he wants like i don't know like i can't describe it like he's just his name is just perfect for him y'all i forgot to pick out so much makeup <sighs> like blush bronzer highlight i don't have any of that in front of me right now so those are my babies you got Goofy and my sweetheart, but King loves to be loved on too. So you got Ethan, which is my Goofy sweetheart. You got Bryson, which is my serious mischievous one. And then you have King, who is my authoritative sweetheart. So very much authoritative. He will be heard, but he does like to be loved on, but only when he wants to be loved on. Again, authoritative, like don't love on him. Do not love on King if he is not asking you for love, cause he will throw a fit. And like I said, he will make sure he's heard. So he's very loud. So that is all about my babies, you guys. Um, I have another, I have a, quite a few. I asked if I'm a dog or cat person, neither, but definitely not a cat person. But do not, I do, I can be around dogs. Just don't touch me, don't look at me, don't get on me, don't jump on me, don't lick me. Don't, don't, just don't smell around me. So I could be around dogs, but just don't get too close to me. <laughs> but cats, leading into the next question, would we ever get a pet? I'm not completely opposed to having a pet, but right now I'm just at the point where like, if we get a pet, like I want somebody else to take care of it because I already have 
a lot going on on my plate and with Brian being home, like he won't be able to help with it that much. So I'm just like, let's wait till Ethan's like six, seven. And that would make Bryson like four or five. And so they could help each other take care of the dog. And that's just where I'm at with the dog. Like we can get a dog just whenever I'm not the one who has to take care of it. Favorite foods, I answered that. Tex-Mex and, and pasta. Ooh, this one's a good one. Favorite Bible chapter. It's gonna be between John and Romans. I like John because it takes you through Jesus's life and it also shows you what he did on the cross for you. And then I like Romans because, Acts and Romans, because they kind of tell you how you should be as a Christian. And I love Romans because it takes you a lot through grace and what it means. And you know, like, should we still live in sin just because we have grace? Like, it's very real. So I recommend if you haven't already read John, Acts, and Romans. Those are like my favorite books in the Bible. Favorite Bible verse, however, is Isaiah. Ooh. Isaiah 40, 31. I want to say it's Isaiah 40, 31. I'll put the correct, the correct exactly where it's at, but it is in Isaiah. And um, it's, you shall mount up or you shall mount up with wings like eagles. You should run and not grow weary. You should walk and not faint. That is my favorite Bible verse. It is, I don't know, gives me peace. Like just, oh, it's gonna make me cry, but just like, how even when you feel like you're so far down like god's promise is always to lift you back up like no matter how bad i don't want to cry like no matter how bad things seem god will always lift you up and you're untouchable because of the way you serve god and the god you serve hopefully these tears don't fall out my eyes turned so red so fast from like six tears, like three tears build up in my eyes and it looks like I've been crying for hours. God is so good. Like he's so beautiful. So somebody said, what is the motto for your family? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That is our family motto. It just reminds us to when those people who are in the world are starting to bother you or people who claim to be Christians and they're not really living like a Christian. It reminds us to mind our own business correct others when needed but remember as for me and my house we're gonna serve the lord i've tried to instruct you i've tried to help you but just know at the end of the day for me and my house we're gonna serve the lord and if that means i've done all i can do for you i've worried about you all i can no matter what goes on around us for me and my house we're gonna serve the lord like that is our family motto what motivates you the most <sighs> knowing that it's gonna make me cry again I don't know what you mean by this one. So I would say career-wise and really wanting to build YouTube up, YouTube up and start my beauty uh, company is knowing that I wanna leave something behind for my kids to grab a hold of and something that they can call theirs. That is what motivates me career-wise and just like in life, like I just wanna be able to leave something behind for my kids that they can build up even further and then leave behind for their kids like that is what motivates me career wise um spiritually what motivates me is knowing that if i don't do my part correctly i could be the reason my kids are condemned to hell and i don't want that like that is my biggest fear and that's what keeps me going in my walk with god so that answers that one on your hard days how do you keep going just remaining in the word and then reminding myself again that if I want my kids to follow God to the fullest, they have to see that when hard times hit, you don't quit. You can be still and wait for God, but you still got to get up out of the bed every day. Get on your knees and pray. That's what mode, um, that's how I keep going. That just because things get hard, you don't quit. And I have to show them that because times will be hard. The Bible doesn't say that just because you live for God, things will be easy. It actually says the opposite. We will face trials and tribulations just because of who we are. And God wants us to prove our faith to him. Your favorite thing to do when it comes to self-care. Uh, 
bubble bath and a glass of wine while watching something on YouTube, whether that be some Bible teachings I need to catch up on, some beauty videos, vlogs, um, and then my most, my self care that I've been doing recently, cause I can't take a bath every night is just getting the kids in bed early enough to where I can shower. So my body has calmed down. I do a stretch video so my body can unwind. And then I read a good uplifting Christian book to unwind my mind. So that is my favorite self care thing to do. Somebody, or let me do this part real quick. So the next question you asked was, what is your favorite book? Um, first and foremost, the Bible. Like, I feel like that's just your manual to life, like how to make this thing work. But obviously, um, my favorite book would have to be, it would have to be Heather and Cornelius Lindsay's Fighting Together. Because I'm always wanting to know how I can be a better wife. And I'm always wanting to know how to understand my husband. And so because that book is written from a man's perspective and a woman's perspective, I feel like it doesn't get any better than that. Okay, and then let me set my face and then I will, and fix my hair and I will answer the last question. I'm gonna use my, going to use, I feel like I need to bronze up just a tiny bit. I'm gonna use my Hydra Mac setting spray. Oh, I need to set my brows first. Guys, I think I forget that just about every single time I do my makeup. So this one is a real serious question and hopefully it don't make me cry again. But the last question asked was, what, what's one thing you could do differently if you could correct one thing you have done? I wouldn't even change the toxic relationship that I went through because I wouldn't have my Ethan and it wouldn't have made me, it wouldn't, like, I wouldn't have never found Christ had I not had that toxic relationship. But because my heart still hurts about this, one thing I would change is hurting the people that were collateral damage because of my toxic relationship. And so, friends, you guys, I was not the best friend, like, I am the friend I am today because I have so much regret about the kind of friend I used to be. And I'm trying to redeem myself from that. Um, so hurting people as collateral damage to my toxic relationship. If I could take back, really in general, if I could take back all the hurt I've ever caused anybody, that's what I would change is hurting people and I know it sounds like oh she's just saying that because she's such a holy holier than thou woman but no like I know what it's like to be hurt and since I've changed my life and like the second I started following God like I feel like I got every seed of hurt that I sowed I feel like I reaped all of it when I found God and that sucks like <sighs> for people to feel how I once made them like to feel what other people felt when I hurt them, like, that sucked. So, if you're watching this and I've hurt you, I'm sorry, but just know I do wish that I could take that back. And I'm not just saying that because, oh, I'm on YouTube, but I'm really saying that I wish I could take back the hurt that I caused people. Um, and that's it. Because it's the only thing I wish, like I wouldn't even want to take back my sins, just, hurting people is what I would take back because there's a lot of things that we have to go through to learn but you shouldn't have to hurt people to know that you should be a good friend you know so I wish I could take that back but you guys that is it for today's video you guys make me be a crybaby I'll be doing another one of these soon so if you don't please follow me on Instagram and please participate yet again I got all of my questions from Raquel and my sister Destiny so Thank you guys, but they got some good questions and they made me cry, so. But anyways, I love you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. If you haven't already, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.